Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How you all doing today? Today we're looking at a Kenmore dryer. Here's a little disclaimer for you. And actually, this is a Whirlpool. It was taking a long time to heat. And the vent is good. It's not clogged. I've already checked that. So we have, what we have is an intermittent problem. Now, I just lubed the rollers. These rollers were stiff, and so now they're, they're good. And I also lubed the idler. So what we need to do is check these coils because these coils tend to give intermittent heating issues. And of course, cleaning up the lint. So we're just looking for continuity here, basically. This double uh, connection coil is normally the one that gives us a problem right here. So I'm going to check these coils. Basically, we're looking for continuity. Should be continuity between the side and the middle, and the side and the middle here. And there should be continuity across these two. If there's not continuity as such, then you have to replace it. Now, it's a good idea to unplug your dryer if you're testing your flame sensor. The flame sensor should have contact. It should show continuity. And normally when it's plugged in, it will probably have 110 volts at these two contacts. We can take this apart. We already know it has a good igniter because it'll ignite, but it's an intermittent problem. But this is the way you can check your igniter. And disconnect that check for continuity across here and or voltage coming out of here if you don't have voltage here and you have continuity here then you know you probably have a bad coil okay so we have we have continuity here so these coils are good so we do not do not have continuity at the flame sensor. And I'll show you how to check that. These are your typical flame sensors. And basically, you set your meter on ohms and check for continuity across these two terminals. What happens is the, f the uh, igniter heats this window up here and there's like a bimetal strip in there that, that opens up these two connections when it heats up. So normally it's a closed circuit when it's cold. When it heats up it opens. And when it opens, then it will activate these valves as such to let the gas in. So basically what this does is it, it senses the heat from the igniter on the back of the flame. And it will tell the system to open up the gas valve. So that's how you check you're just looking for continuity across these terminals on the flame sensor. This one here, it was an intermittent problem. So occasionally it would show and occasionally it would not show a, a continuity. So we're going to replace that and we should be good to go. So there's just one screw that holds this on. And one small screw that holds that flame sensor on. So once you take that top screw off, then you just bend it 
sort of pull it back and then this tang here lift up and it, it will come out. So these connections here are like security connections. So you have to you have to be very careful when you take these or you take these off or you can bust the whole thing apart. Uh, because these connections here are on here fairly tight. Basically there's a little thing in the center of these you have to sort of push to take these off. So yeah, if you see, if you look inside there, you'll see this one here has a little hole. And you have to push in slightly in order to pull that wire off. It's the same thing on this one here. You have to push in on that little hole in order to pull that wire off if you want to save this uh, flame sensor. Some of them can be rebuilt temporarily. You can take them apart and clean them. But in this case, I'm just going to replace it at this point. And so here's how this idler fits in. Basically, these holes here, just put the end in. Let it hang there like that until you get everything uh, lined up. You want to pull these out as far as they'll go. And pull your, put your drum in. in the belt anywhere along the line. If you have a kink in your belt, sometimes it will hang up here on the idler. Make sure there's no kinks in the belt anywhere. And sort of let that hang because the belt will the belt will hold it in place somewhat. Make sure your belt's lined up. There's no uh, twist in the belt. And then you can install this back. Set it underneath the barrel, the lip of the barrel. And then these hooks down here hooks right there. I have to go in that hole right down there. Make sure the lip is 
good. And put your screws back in. And if you need any help, I um, give phone coaching for a donation. And the phone number is 707-443-8347 for phone coaching for a donation. And just remember that working on appliances may be hazardous. If in doubt, contact your local professional. And so I've got a whole nut driver I use for these. This is a like six in one nut driver, which is pretty cool. You can buy them at Harbor Freight. Should be good to go. Give it a quick try here. So I'm power strip. Make sure we're on a heat setting. If we look in here, we should see the flame. The igniter ignite and the flame come on and there's the igniter so the igniter is glowing and we should see the flame fire up and there it is so you need to try this like three times in a row to make sure it's gonna fire I always check it like three times in a row. Now this one here has got some bubble gum inside of it and I've already told the, my friend about it but they have never had any problem with little black marks on their clothes but if you have little black marks on your clothes you want to make sure that there's no none of this bubble gum in here. Um, so let's give it another try. And once again, we should see the igniter glow. There it is. And then we should see the flame come on. It glows for about a half a minute or so, and then the flames fire it up. And so, that's your dryer tip for today. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, please send me a donation. Bills Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Thank you for your support. Your donation helps to support reuse and recycling worldwide.